Hi everyone, this video is part of Macquarie University's coding tutorials. In this video, we'll be going over how to define and implement our car class in Java and how to create objects from that class. We will focus on instance variables or attributes and how they are used to store data within an object. We will also cover how to access and modify these instance variables as well as how to instantiate an object. We'll also discuss the importance of understanding memory diagrams when working with classes and objects in Java. Finally, we'll go over how static variables are different and finally understand when to use the word static. To begin, let's create a new project we can work in. I'll call this one cars. And in our new project, let's create a new class and call it car with a capital C and untick the main method since this will not be code that we can run. We will just be creating a template. Let's take the example of a car class that we've previously created in the UML diagram. We will start by defining the class and then add the instance variables or attributes that are specific to a car. We call these instance variables because each car we make will have its own unique set of these variables. In this example, we have instance variables for the make, model, year of the car, current speed, and number of seats. And now we're on track to making our own cars. Again, to emphasize, it's important to note that a class is like a template. It defines what a car should have, but it is not runnable code and it is not an actual car. It is just an idea of what a car is. You'll also notice we haven't implemented any functions. These are all variables. Functions, also known as instance methods in this context, will be covered in a later video. In order to create an object from our class, we first need to have a class that has a main method. The main method is the entry point of our program and allows us to create and access objects. Let's create a new class by right clicking the project, going to new and class, and let's call this one car tester. We'll then make sure the main method option is checked and click finish. In the main method, we can now create an object of our car class. Notice that this looks very much like when we create a variable and more specifically an array. We start with the data type, then the variable name, in which case I have used my car, then the word new because we need to allocate memory for our object, and finally we use the class constructor. You'll notice that we didn't do anything else in the car class besides declare variables, but by default, every class gets a default constructor. We'll talk more about constructors later on, but for now, just know that the constructor name is the same as the class name, and we need parentheses similar to when we call a function. In this case, we leave the parentheses empty, and this creates a new object of the class car and assigns it to the variable my car. Now we have an object, but how do we access its make, model, year, and all other instance variables it has? Well, we can use the dot notation and the variable name. For example, to access the make of the car, we would write my car dot make. Let's try to print this and see what comes up. In the console, we can see it says null, meaning it's nothing. Why is this? Well, we didn't give it a default value in the class. This is not necessarily a bad thing, but if we want to customize our car, we need to change that. If we wanted to, we could give every car a default make inside of the class by setting the make to something to begin with, but it makes more sense in this case to leave it null by default. So if someone makes a car, they specify the make when customizing the car. To modify the instance variable, we would use the assignment operator to assign a new value to the variable. Notice that this works like any other variable, we just have to specify my car in front of it so we know which car instance we're getting the make of. If we had more than one car, we would specify which car instance we were interested in the make of by putting the appropriate reference at the beginning. As practice, feel free to pause the video and make more cars and practice accessing and modifying the instance variables. It is important to understand how memory diagrams work when working with classes and objects in Java. A memory diagram is a visual representation of the memory being used by the program. When we draw a memory diagram, each variable is represented by a box and we call it a reference. The object itself is a big block called an instance, and within it are smaller blocks to hold the relevant attributes. We draw a line between the reference and the instance to show that the reference is pointing to the instance. This pointing terminology is useful because, for example, if we change which instance a variable is referring to, we can remind ourselves that it will no longer point to the current instance and must point somewhere else instead. In the case of our my car reference, it is represented by a box. The object is another box with the memory allocated for the make, model, year, current speed, and number of seats instance variables inside of it. The lines connecting the boxes show the reference between the my car variable and the car object that my car is referencing. Memory diagrams are a very useful skill and we will practice making and understanding memory diagrams a lot throughout this series. 
In previous videos, we briefly introduced the keyword static when discussing class and instance variables. In this section, now that you know a bit more about objects, we'll go into more detail about what static means and how it is used in Java. A static variable and method belongs to the class as a whole, rather than to specific instances of the class. This means that a static variable or method can be accessed and used without the need to create instances. On the other hand, a non-static variable or method is unique to each instance of the class and is often referred to as an instance variable or method. For example, let's use our class called car with a static variable called number of cars and an instance variable called make. The static variable number of cars would keep track of the total number of cars that have been created, regardless of their individual make, model, or year whereas the instance variable make would be unique to each individual car object and would be used to store the make of that specific car. To declare a static variable or method, we use the keyword static before the variable or method declaration. Let's add the static variable to our class. In this example, the variable number of cars is static. Notice that we still need to say it is of type int, we just proceed it with the word static. This means that the variable is visible to a whole program and is shared among all car objects. The variable can be called on the class directly without needing to create an instance of the car first. In practice, this would mean that when we create a new car in the main method, we would increase the number of cars variable. Let's increase the variable straight after we have made my car. We access the variable on the class directly using car, not on the object my car, since the variable is static. Now when we print the static variable number of cars by accessing it straight on the class, we get a value of 1. We have one car in total. I definitely recommend you play around with this, creating multiple cars and seeing how increasing the number of cars variable each time you create a car allows you to easily keep track of the number of cars made. In summary, when we decide whether an attribute or method is static or not, we ask whether it belongs to the class or to individual objects. Does the object need its own unique version of this? If not, make it static. If yes, don't make it static and a fresh version of it will be made for each object you create. In this video, we have covered how to define a class in Java, how to create objects from that class, how to access and modify instance variables, and the importance of understanding memory diagrams when working with classes and objects in Java. We have also looked at when the static keyword is used. In the next video, we'll take a look at null in the context of objects. See you there!